So we'll double click on the tank actor and then we're going to create a new rule. And basically what we want to do is take this first pull down and switch this over to attribute. And we're going to choose the attribute that we want to pay attention to, which obviously is our forward attribute that we created. And when the forward attribute contains the word forward, then what do we want it to do? So in other words, that attribute we created forward, when we switch that to forward, what do we want to happen? Well, we are going to grab our move behavior. And our tank is facing up in 90 degrees, so we're going to switch our direction over to 90 degrees. And speed, I'm going to slow that down a little bit, so we'll go to 125. And then we'll preview this to see how it's looking. So when I push the up key, you can see that our tank now drives up. The reason that's happening is because the up key is changing this attribute over here, this forward attribute to from none to forward, and the tank is now paying attention to that attribute. It's watching what's going on here, and what we essentially told the tank to do is when this switches to forward, go ahead and drive forward. But when it's back to none, obviously you're going to stop driving. So let's just repeat this process for the rest of the tank. Double click on the tank actor to get back inside there. And I can just duplicate this by clicking on it and dragging, holding the Alt key. So the next attribute we're going to do is the back attribute. And when that contains the word back, Make sure that you get these words exactly spelled correctly, otherwise you're going to have issues. And we can essentially just take our direction and turn it 180 degrees and put it down to 270. If you don't know your degrees, just grab the dial and turn it around. And at this point you could change the reverse speed, so maybe when your tank's going forward you want it to go 125 in speed, and maybe it backs up a little bit slower, so you know it can go 100 in reverse not quite as fast. And let's go ahead and preview this. So the up key will drive our tank forward, the down key will drive our tank back. So let's add in the rules for getting our tank to turn. So I'll just minimize these, create a new rule. Again we want to select attribute, and the attribute we want to select this time is the left attribute and when the left attribute contains the word left, we want to rotate our tank. So I'm going to grab the rotate behavior, drag that into this rule, and left would be counterclockwise, so that's good. I'm just going to duplicate this rule, and we want to switch this one more time to the final attribute that we created, which was the right attribute, and when this contains the word right, we want to rotate our tank clockwise. So that's all there is to getting our tank to drive. So we'll test this out. The up key, the down key, the left key, the right key, and of course we can do all of these together and we can start driving our tank around the scene. And because we set up our own little kind of jury-rigged attribute viewer. You can see in the white boxes below, you can see the attributes that I'm pressing. And at some point, we'll go ahead and delete all of those white boxes when we don't need to check our attributes anymore. So I'll click the back arrow. And we can grab all of these behaviors that we just did, and we can copy them. So I'm going to click on each one holding the shift key. And I'm going to do a copy. And we can go into our gun actor, double click on that. And I can click paste. And let's see what happens now when we preview this. So you can see that our gun turret is rotating and moving with our tank.
So that's almost right, but what we want to do is we want to actually delete the move behavior, the forward and back behavior from our gun tort. And the reason that we're going to do that is we're going to have the gun essentially glued to the tank as far as its X and Y movement, so that wherever the tank moves, the gun will move. But we want the gun to have its own independent rotation. So what we want to do right now is we want to delete this first one, which was called forward. And we want to delete this second one, which is called back. Let's preview this. And you'll notice that we can get our tank to move forward and back. And we can get our tank and gun to rotate together. But the gun itself isn't moving. So how do we get the gun to snap directly on the tank? Well, right now would be a great time to go ahead and save your scene. And as I pointed out earlier, go ahead and save everything out in increments. So now I will save this as 1.3. It doesn't matter if you're saving the same amount as I am. Just go ahead and save it in increments like this so you have files to go back to just in case you make a mistake. Now, to basically get the gun to pay attention to the position of the tank, we have to tell game, game Salad where the tank is at all times. So we're going to jump back into our tank actor really quick. And we want to set up a timer that tells Game Salad where you are in X and where you are in Y. But before we do that, we need to create an attribute that we can feed that value into. So we're going to go back to our attributes and I'm going to click the plus icon and I'm going to create an integer this time which is essentially just a, uh, a set of numbers. We'll click choose and I'm going to say tank x and then I'll create another one here also an integer and we'll call this tank y so you can see by default the value for tank X and tank Y is 0, 0. And what we want to do is we want the tank to update these two attributes very often where it is in its X and Y position in the scene. And then we're going to get the gun to pay attention to those two attributes and also update its position to these values. So the first things first, we need the tank to feed these attributes its position. So let's jump into our tank actor. And we're going to create a timer here. So just drag and drop that timer. And we want every 0 0.001 seconds. So that's a very fast unit of time. We'll click the run to completion. So every 0 .001 seconds we're going to change an attribute. And you remember the attributes that we just created were tank X and tank Y. So the first attribute we're going to change is tank X. And what do we want to change this to? Well we're going to change it to, if we click the expression editor here, to the tank's position in X. So these are our game attributes. These are attributes that are associated with our tank. So we're going to click on the tank. We're going to click on position. And we're going to click on X or double click on X and then check that off. And then I'm going to hold the Alt key and duplicate this. And now I'm going to switch this attribute to tank Y. And we want to remove this expression and choose tank position, double click on Y and check that off. So let me explain quickly what I've done here. We created two attributes, one called tank X and one called tank Y. By default those attributes were set to zero. What I want to do is have those attributes updated with the tank's position all the time. So that's why we set such a very small value of time. Every 0 .001 seconds we're going to update that. Now, what are those values going to be updated with? They're going to be updated to the tank's X position and the tank's Y position. So just like I did earlier, if you want to see what this looks like, we can go ahead and create an actor. We'll just call this tank X. 
double click on that and we will go back to display text now the more you use game salad the less you'll have to rely on creating kind of these on-screen attribute displays but I, I really like to teach this technique in the beginning because it saves you a ton of time and helps you understand what you're doing so the text we want to display here we'll make our text black the text we want to display is the attribute one of the two attributes we just created and the first one was tank x And I'll duplicate this actor by holding the Alt key, click and drag. And I'm going to rename this Tank Y. I'll double click on that. I'll remove this expression because that was the duplicated expression from before. And we are going to grab that other attribute. So display the text or the, the text should display the attribute that's associated with Tank Y. Check that off and we'll drag these two guys into our scene here tank X and tank Y and if I preview right away they should be displaying the attributes associated with the tanks position in X and Y so you can see if I drive the tank up and down we're getting a change in all of those values so now that we've set this up so that the tank every 0.001 seconds is feeding its position data to those two attributes. Now we can get the turret to pay attention to these two attributes and change its position based on these two attributes. And that's actually really simple to do. It's kind of just like the reverse of what we've just done. So I'm going to double click on the gun. We'll minimize these and we will again create a timer and every we're going to set this up to be the exact same time 0 0.001 seconds run that to completion we want to change an attribute so the attribute we're going to change is essentially the reverse of what we just did over in the tank itself we're going to change the guns position so click on the gun its position in X and we're going to switch that over to the attribute we created which is tank X and we'll check that off and I'll duplicate this so I can repeat this process we're going to take the guns position in Y and we want to change it to remove expression the attribute tank Y. I'll check that off. So you'll notice if I just look at my scene not in preview mode and I put my gun all the way over here that the minute I hit preview you'll see that that gun is snapped directly to the tank. That's because in the time frame of 0 .001 the tanks told that two attributes where it was the gun looked at those two attributes and changed its position based on those attributes. So it's probably a good idea to take your gun turret and just put it on top of your tank just so there's no um, tiny tiny delay just in case there's a slow processing time and then if we click preview it'll look like it's stuck there exactly. So if I push forward and push back rotate right, rotate left you'll see that everything is following the tank perfectly.